day one, we talked about how to find out where you want to get published and basically by studying your dream publications. We took notes, we researched them, we wrote our ideas, we took notes on the articles that those people already wrote, and we started to think about what we were gonna to say to the editors. So, what we're doing now is, we're gonna put it all together. If you drop your email, and I'll repeat this a couple times, if you drop your email in the comments, I will send you a recap of this all typed up. You should have been taking notes, but if you drop your email, I'm going to send kind of a cheat sheet. All right. So what we're talking about is how to get your own press, how to not hire me, how to not hire a publicist and get top tier media coverage of you or your brand for free. So. Day one, we were basically researching. And you can find day one here in my Instagram lives. It's also on my YouTube. And just go to alyssapinsker.com. Day two, we were we figured out who we want to pitch. Exactly who. The person by their name, which publication. And if you truly couldn't find it by looking at the publication, you can use Rocket Reach. So we studied that publication through and through, and we're gonna write a really nice email to them to say, please write about me, but here's why. Here's why that helps you. This is a service to you. So, okay. On our last day, we picked our magazine and we're gonna figure out what we're gonna to say to that person. So by the way, you might have be thinking, um, what about the article? Actually, we're just pitching. So how easy is that? We don't even have to, um... <laughs> sorry, so this is my New Year's Eve outfit. I just realized I forgot my earrings, but I'm gonna wear my earrings when I go out. I just wanted to, this is a pre-party. So, um, we figured out exactly which magazine and you're thinking, well, what am I going to write? Well, don't worry about it because actually you pitch before you publish. So you pitch the idea and then the editor is like, hmm, yes, I really need that. Um, that's a cool idea. But we don't have to be so revolutionary actually because the editors, they usually know exactly what they want and need. So again, let me just repeat, drop your email if you want this all condensed and written up for you in a little cheat sheet workbook. So you're not writing the whole article. Now I have heard non, I, I've heard publicists who are not also journalists like me tell you to A, write a press release and just send that to everyone. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to quantity, you want to quality. Um, by the way, this is, I know, a little, but this is a painting I made when I lived in Paris, of Paris, that's Mont Montparnasse, which is a building near where I lived, and it just reminds me of Paris, and I'm going to Paris soon, so, and I painted that, like, a long time ago. So, you're not going to have to write the whole article, so you don't want to send one press release that says, this is me, I'm going to send it to everyone. Maybe that works. I don't recommend it. I think that that doesn't build relationships. It doesn't build relationships in the sense that the editor is going to remember you because what we're doing here is we're, we're planting seeds. We're building relationships. So don't, don't just spray one press release and don't write the article first. In fact, it's good news for you. I'm going to write a note to myself to make sure to remind you all in your cheat sheet that you're not writing the article first. And the reason you're not writing the article first is because it's actually considerate of you to not write the article first because you're pitching it to the editor. You made sure that it 
fit in the voice. You're studying the voice of the magazine. You're learning the voice of the publication. And you're kind of guessing at it. And so say you're going to pitch like 10 ways to blah, 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 because you notice that this magazine always has articles about 10 ways to, and this is called a how-to piece or a service piece. Once the editor is like, yeah, that's a good idea. The editor may have a little bit of tweakiness, like some, yeah, we can use that. Um, and they might be super specific, but I told you, you should already study this. Yeah, 800 words. They might ask, when can you have it? Try to do it in a week. Me, I'm a seasoned writer. I give myself two weeks because I'm a perfectionist and I feel like I can get away with that. But as a newbie, um, you're going to want to say, I'll have this to you in a week, max. Don't don't try less than a week, though, I think, you know, because that's a whole other issue when we're writing and rewriting and making it all perfect and stuff. But you can follow these same principles when you're actually writing the piece. The principles are that you're studying the publication and you're fitting into the voice of the publication. So you'll see, okay, well, they're all 800 words. I noticed that they write in the first person. I noticed that they start with like a narrative description. There's a lot of parroting here and that's okay because this is not our novel. This is not our blog. This is us doing a service to this publication and giving them content. I don't like that word, but it's the new word, content. Um, we're giving them free content and we're helping them out. We're helping out the editors at these publications because they need content. They have some staff writers, okay? Um, but most of them, some of them operate fully on freelancers. And likewise, magazines like Authority Magazine the content, they, they kind of have like these pre-written um, um, interviews that are already written up and the content that you're providing is you're the subject. You're the interview subject. That's providing them a service. They're posting on helpareporter.com, which I gave that free tip last time that I charge um, a couple hundred bucks for to set people up in it and learn how to do this, but essentially, in a nutshell, helpareporter.com and my own group that I run we're, is full of journalists who are really, I you know, jokingly said desperate, but they really need sources. So in the group that I run, um, a writer just posted, I need, a, I need an art therapist by, I think, Monday. Well, my sister's an art therapist, so I, I've referred her. Now, she may or may not be interested, but if you were an art therapist and you wanted to get press, because she has a lot of press already, that is you doing her a favor, right? So in this business of relationships, it's always about giving and then asking, but we give first, or we make sure that this is serving them somehow. Okay, so... We basically got up to the part where you selected your magazine, you found the editor's email, you found exactly where you're gonna write it, like what part of the magazine, and we're up to the part where you're gonna, what do you say to them? I told you last time to even start thinking about a snazzy title, and how do you fi figure out that title? Look at the other article's titles. So you think of that snazzy title and we already wrote basically paragraph one so again this is straight from my um, book called how to get published in top magazines the blueprint <clears throat> and paragraph one was so their name but even that is kind of revolutionary for someone that's just sending out you know these like to whom it may concern so Dear Patricia, and um, it's okay to use a first name if you want to be formal and say Mr. or Miss, but Dear Patricia, and what did we say to do? We said to read their work and say something that shows that you read their work, and so therefore it would be something positive, 
I loved your recent article on XYZ. This line was so lyrical and well written, or I feel like it's such an important service that you wrote this and I love that part. It's less about relating it to you. Like I also lived in Italy, but you can throw that in, but it's more about them and that you admire their work. Um, say they just published a book. Congratulations on your, you know, your <clears throat> soon to be published novel. So, dear editor, I, I, I researched you. I know who you are and I'm letting you know that. And I'm basically complimenting them. I'd like to pitch and maybe do the words just to show you know their stuff. So how many words? Well, read that art magazine. Okay, they all seem to be around 1,500 words. I'd like to pitch a 1,500 word article about. Now, if it's kind of like a service piece or a travel piece, you don't have to be that snazzy. But again, it fits into the language. That's why you're just reading this magazine over and over, 10 copies of it online. And it's like in your head about why Gen Z loves Italy in the summertime. Like, I just make these things up off the top of my head. I have um, examples from my students. I have examples from myself. I can, from my, my own mentor's book, which she basically published everyone's um, examples and I myself am in there but um <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just looking at her like do's and don'ts which we'll go over at the end so something like um I'd like for you I'd I'd like to pitch a 1500 word article on best restaurants of Florence yeah that's good enough um, but if it's something more like you're a tech guru and something like why or how I went from a Mormon mother of five who never worked outside the home to a million, mil, the CEO of a million dollar tech company. That's a true story. Hey, Crystal. Um, so you're figuring out what your pitch is. And a lot of times, it's if it, you're an entrepreneur, it's often from here to here. So from burnt out nanny to multi six figure business intuitive who made all her money, you know, who, who from, and I always say like something surprising, like from sound bowls and tarot. So this might sound hard to you, but when you, if you had read 10 copies of whatever your dream publication, say it was Forbes, then it would start to kind of get into your head and you'll see that that is kind of like the formula. Often for entrepreneurs, it's like, what's the big shift from McDonald's employee to billionaire CEO without who works four hours a week? Like that's sort of surprising to people. Yes, good question. So at the end, I'm gonna talk about like my packages. So this, this whole uh, workshop is about how to get away without hiring me, <laughs> how to be your own publicist. But if you hire me, I can help. And I do have a sort of a DIY package where it's more collaborative. So it's not like, all right, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna write everything for you. You just sit there and I interview you, there are packages where, and it helps you with your price, where you're gonna, we're gonna collaboratively, I'm gonna help you write your pitch. And I have helped many clients with that. Good. So we were talking about the first sentence, first paragraph, which is basically, Dear Max, I loved your recent article. It was very detailed and interesting read because, and I'm writing you, to pitch a 1500 word article about the snow mass balloon festival this February. Now here's the part that I mentioned last time. Now is about who you are. I am. 
So for me, I'm a travel, I'm an award-winning travel writer whose work has been appeared in BBC, Cosmopolitan, and New York Magazine. If you're not published, then you should, if you're a business owner by now, you should start to get to know your elevator pitch. That's what I do as well as a publicist, help you make your little elevator pitch. I'm, this was actually my client's because he had never published in, my, in a magazine, but he had some success as a photographer. So I'm a professional travel photographer based out of Austin, Texas. I have a travel Instagram with over 16,000 followers and I've been asked to present my phot photographic work at the invitation only Raw Artist National so Showcase. So it's like kind of resume E, basically what's cool about you. Um, if we were pitching Crystal, Crystal's an entrepreneur. I'm, um, I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur. I'm a former nanny who became a multi six figure entrepreneur who's, and I have been featured in. So it's either where you've written for or you've already been featured in. And Crystal's been in Voyage. She's been in Shadow. She's going to be an authority. She was on Ticker News. She's so, um, this is something that you really should always think about, but you kind of can't make just one because you have an elevator pitch for when you're pitching an investor. You have an elevator pitch for who, if you're pitching a book, you have your packages, right? So this is a little specific to the editor. So for example, if it's like a wildlife magazine, you would highlight your work in prior nature publications. So I am and make it quippy, make it short. In writing, it's always about how to say the most in the least amount of words. I didn't have the time to write you a short letter, so my process as a writer is I write it all out, I get it all out on the page, and then I say, how can I make this as short as possible? How can I make this, all those details, but as short as possible? Um, and then thank you for your time and consideration. Make sure you have your name, your email, your phone number, your address, any, you know, make sure they can contact you. And if you have photographs, I can include high resolution photographs for this piece. But that little meat in between is sort of the, it is the most important part, how to make it sound really good. If it's a service piece, it might be as simple as, um, I have, like I said, I have a, a roundup of, of of vegan restaurants, the best, I have a roundup of the best vegan restaurants in Florence, Italy. Would you pitch that to a restaurant that, uh, sorry, to a magazine that never, ever has articles like that? These things sound sort of basic, but editors, because I was an editor at Condé Nast and at um, Time Out New York and at Bus Magazine, and we would just get these pitches that were like, they obviously never even read the magazine. So what you're gonna write is what fits in there. Say you wanna be published in yoga journal. Study 10 yoga journals, find the online versions. Start to be like, mm, I noticed they always have a column, a little article that's like um, interview with a yogi or non-traditional yogis or spotlight on plus size um, yoga or whatever and you realize that okay I see a theme here so then when you're pitching it either you have to make it interesting enough to be different from what they already have but fit within that format so that is the hardest part is like how to make it snazzy and like as I said afterwards you can then um once you get that all done, then you think about your title, and the title goes in the subject line. You can write pitch, colon, snazzy title. Now, say I gave you that person's name. I would write in the subject line, referred by Alyssa Pinsker. Always use your relationships. And myself, as a publicist, I have personal relationships with a lot of editors, and therefore in my Rolodex, um, which is for sale on my website and actually it's um, it's a hundred dollars less um, we're not I'm not sure exactly this is still the holidays technically so it's a holiday special 
So it's $3.97 instead of $4.97, which is an incredibly low price to pay for warm or even hot contacts of editors and journalists, mostly editors, because you want to go right to the source of who you want to pitch. So I'm not giving you permission to say Alyssa Pinsker gave me your name if you buy my Rolodex, but if you work with me, I may give that permission because I may feel like this is a really strong piece. I know this editor at Huffington Post, you can say I sent you. So I just opened up to find some more examples. Um, Dear Miss X, so-and-so gave me your email. I enjoyed her piece on blah, blah, and I've been in love with your magazine forever. I hope you consider my new essay, Caught in the Web, about my illicit link to my first lover's wife. I hope Adele's song, Hello, and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend references make it timely. So this is dated, but that's a good pitch because, and it's not over, because it was a timely hook. That's what we call a, a timely hook, a newsy hook. That was all the rage, hello? Um, and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was like huge. When was that? Two, I, 2000, I don't know. Um, so she said, you know, someone's looking at your email. I love your piece. I love your magazine. I love my friend's piece. I write for the New York Times, Washington Post, Marie Claire, and Oprah.com. And I pasted and attached the essay. Um, so in this case, she wrote the essay first because she is, she knows what they're looking for and she, you, you can attach it. But as a beginner, I would try not to. Um, just pitch first. And then she put like some of her best clips in the end. And then she was saying that this ran in um, like five other publications because that's called syndication. So my stuff's been syndicated too and it just keeps going. So what are some do's and don'ts? I, I, I told you to find them on social media and maybe follow and maybe heart some of their stuff, but don't DM them. Do not DM them there and be like, hey, can you publish me? Maybe I'm old fashioned, so it's up to you, but I wouldn't do that. I, I, I don't like doing business through social media. Um, I like it in my email because I can organize it and that, that's just me as an editor. Um, read all the rules. Before you submit, it'll have very clear um, submission guidelines. You don't need to send a resume. You don't need to send photos. Don't multiple submit. Don't brag. Again, it's not like, hey, I'm really great. It's, hey, I love your work. Here's how I can help you. I have a piece for your magazine. And I said, um, that um, publications have editorial calendars. That means like they already know what they're publishing and you can look them up, Google, Vogue editorial calendar. Um, so there's like always like the holiday gift guide. Then we have to talk about lead time. So publications like old school magazines, print, um, have about sometimes, I would say a three month lead time. Um, if it's only out four times a year, then it has, um, a three month lead time. If it's a daily online that has a very short, almost a daily lead time. So they're getting pitches daily and that's fine. That's why I said, give it a week turnaround. So don't write, you know, um, to whom it may concern. Um, I never heard of your magazine. Um, Hey, what's up? Don't be too casual. Don't be cute. Be professional. Um, I'll call you later. <laughs> So, um, I already published this here. Can you rerun it? So you're serving them by getting content for their magazine and, and they need it. And they like places like Voyage and, um, shout out, they need entrepreneurs and professionals to highlight. So as I said, this is all directly from my book, which is, I printed it out, but it's an ebook and this is called how to get published in top magazines, the blueprint. 
and it's just all neatly organized in here for you so that's like a cheat sheet for you and that is on sale for 33 bucks so that's really cheap it was 111 because it's such valuable information and it's all written down for you um but it's on sale for 33 bucks um i have a little more to go over about the follow-up but i also want to say that there are publications that are so needy in content that they are guaranteed like that's the thing with publishing you never know well certain publications are guaranteed and i love those for my clients because i'm like um i'm 100 percent sure you will get in this publication and doing this crazy holiday discount where it's only 250 to get into um this national business publication it's 750 to get on this news station it's 750 to get on the news station and 500 to get in this 80 million view magazine they all have like around if you averaged it i would say 50 million readers so that's pr that's me helping you get published i help you write it i help you edit it i help you don't worry so that's what you're paying for is for me to help you um so you wrote this beautiful email now please do not just hit send. There's Grammarly, which is a free um, application. You can use Grammarly. It's amazing. I remember a writer friend told me and it like, wow, changed my life. I always send my stuff to a reader, which it could be your mom, somebody who is a really good editor, really highly detailed. This is called proofreading. This is line by line. This is no grammar, no, no, typos so check it over and then you click send and then you wait and I would say that you can follow up three times I have heard people following up five times and it depends you'll get a vibe <laughs> if it's like dead silence um, but I think I followed up five times on one of my early pieces like the daily news and like she was like there was something going on I think she had the editor assigned it and then she left so you know don't give up I say pitch until you get a no um, so when you check in you're not like hey see below you know hi you might want to start again I read your latest piece about this I was wondering if you had time to check out my pitch X the title thanks so much for your time and consideration please let me know if you need anything again so when you're checking in, it's right there in front of their eyes and it's not like see below or like a forward. When you get a forward, it's um, below. I have, it has worked on me, this a little trick that um, has worked on me is the RE, <laughs> like re, like oh re, like that means that we're in a conversation regarding this. Um, so you could do re the title of your piece and just keep following up until you get a no. Um, don't call them, email, uh, follow up every two weeks, um, uh, up to, I would say five times max and keep everything as short, 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 because they have like 10 seconds to read it. Pitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, that's when everyone's more free. I'm looking over my tips and tricks. Check how many words it is. Use an intro. So and so, give me your name. Oh, when you're writing the piece or even in your query, never use the same word twice. This basic, basic rule of writing is so valuable, life changing. And you'll notice that magazines do that. Like they'll even like not repeat the word woman. They'll be like ladies, women, um, gal pal. Right? Did you ever notice that they do that in magazines? It's because we just blank out if we see the word more than once. So use thesaurus.com, synonyms.com, and never use the same word, even a noun. Never use the same word twice. There's a little um, repetitiondetector.com. Can I help you with that? Twitter is very, I don't know what's going on right now with Elon Musk and all, but Twitter is very useful for um, editors will often be like, hey, I need a piece on I need a, I need someone to write a piece on Montana. I need, so that's the writer and then the source, I need to interview a coach. I need to interview a doctor. Again, being a source, you don't even have to write. 
And my tip again is to go to helpareporter.com and look for people. They, those are writers who need sources. They need to interview you, you, the business leader. So they like, say you own a nail salon. Um, I need to interview a nail salon. That's where you get, you don't even have to write. So that's the, um, if you hate writing, either hire me or become a source. And I, as I said, I have a program to help it, to help you with that because there's help a reporter. There's also a, my own private group I run where, as I said, I saw today, they're looking for an art therapist. My sister's an art therapist. Um, so on Twitter, people will be posting all the time. Hey, I need this. I need that. So you, how do you know who to follow? You read 10 copies of National Geographic, so you notice that her name is Starlight something, is an editor, go follow her on Twitter. So you can follow them on Twitter, just like not so much DM. Personalize each pitch to the editor. Don't spam them like, spam, I would say like just cut and paste and um, as we said, qual quantity versus quality. I'm teaching quality. Spell their name correctly. Oh my gosh, that's like, I've opened it up and gotten my name spelled wrong and these are people asking me for money. These are people who want me to buy their services. Always over, sorry, in the business, we have a, a common saying, you might have heard this in other businesses, you pod, under promise, over deliver. Be easy to work with, easy breezy, an editor, a writer, we'd rather work with someone who's real easy to work with than a brilliant Kanye West type. <laughs> um, that snazzy subject line, that snazzy title is so important. Um, but if the publication, like every single one you notice, it's always like 10 things to do and that, 10 ways to do that, then just copy what theirs is. Copy what their style and what their format and voice is for what you're writing, for the title, for all of it. The subject line could be article pitch, snazzy title, article pitch, title. Sometimes I put the word timely because it is timely, like timely article pitch, timely pitch. Use 12 point font, double space times New Roman. Like people in the writing world, media, like we care about that. Um, so no like cartoon font. Um, read the editor's work, compliment them. If you're pitching yourself, you use these methods. If you're pitching your business, you use these methods. So what's the difference between PR and pitching yourself? PR is a third party, me. So if you hired me as your publicist, traditional publicist, I'm pitching you. Hey, my client's amazing. Hey, have you heard about my client? But I love doing DIY PR where we collab and I'm teaching you to pitch yourself. I, I think sometimes when you pitch yourself to a magazine, it is more powerful. Always be polite and respectful. Today's intern is tomorrow's EIC. Um, and please research who you're pitching and the magazine. So to summarize, step one, pick a topic, research the heck out of it, find the right person. Step two, write that perfect pitch. Step four, follow up. Okay. That's again, straight out of my book, how to get published in top magazines, the blueprint. You can DM me, DM me here. Um, because if you're not on my mailing list, please drop your email. So please drop your email so that you a get a cheat sheet. It's not going to be this exact book, but a cheat sheet of what I discussed in these last three days in this free class. DM me, email me, info at alyssapinsker.com, go to alyssapinsker.com, here, Twitter, Facebook, reach out. I will give you the discount to get the book for $33 and the discount for some publications, which is $250 for Shout Out Colorado, which is nationwide, um, a television station for $750, um, Entrepreneurial Magazine for $500, and this mindfulness website for 750, which includes me helping you write the piece because you have to write something really good for, for that one. For the rest, you're just being interviewed. So I would say just have a consult with me. When you consult with me, we can say, okay, do you wanna write? Do you like to write? Some of my clients do. If not, then let's pick the ones where you're just being interviewed. And I will 
read, read that over before before um before you submit it so happy almost new year oh my god it's tomorrow is new year's eve so here's to 2023 i want to help you get published um i help people get published in top tier magazines them or their businesses and I help them become travel writers like me to travel the world VIP. And I also, because I formerly, uh, I am currently still a model, but formerly an, an actress, but that's, I have auditions, commercial. Um, I was an on stage kind of what we call storytelling. Um, and storytelling applies to TED Talks, things like that. So public speaking, I can absolutely help you tighten up your work. So drop your email if you're not on my mailing list. If you are on the mailing list, I'm going to send it to everybody on my mailing list. It's going to get the cheat sheet. And DM me if you have any questions. So happy new year. Happy 2023. I'm going to go walk Bean. He's been patiently waiting. Good to see y'all. See y'all soon.